Hello everyone, my name is Mathieu Mezi, I'm consultant, trainer and speaker for Infinite Square in Paris, France, Data Platform Development MVP and Ineta Speaker. Today I'm back to speak about WCF Async Global Services alias WAX. I presented WCF Async Global Services to several folks. I had excellent feedbacks, but also one recurrent criticism, I need a better tooling. So I worked very hard on it. It was my first usage of NuGet and PowerShell. I used my skills on Roslyn, and today I am very pleased to present you Wax Tooling and to announce that WCF Async Global Services is now available on NuGet. So let me show you this. First, you have to know that in order to use this first version, you must install Visual Studio 2010 SP1 with Async CTP on Windows 7 and you need to use Entity Framework with Endemix. To use WAX, you have to install WCF Async Cover Services Visual Studio extension in Tool Extension Manager. And then you have to restart VS as administrator. You only need to use it as administrator for the first WCF Async Global Services you get package installation. So I already installed it. So we can start with an empty web application. So wax tooling demo dot web for example then we add an DMX Northwind for example Okay, with only customer for this very basic demo. Okay. Then we're going to package manager console and we install WCF Async Cover Services dot server NuGet package. Start package WCF async cover services dot server. Okay, now we have to apply a PowerShell commandlet in the package manager console. WCF async over services server. Note that we have the IntelliSense using tab. The first parameter is the EDMX pass, and the second one allows splitting the different main parts of WAX in order to use different projects if you don't want to have the IDMX in the web application, for example. In this first sample, we would choose to generate all the code in our web project. Wax tooling adds global ASAX and SBC file. It completes web.config and it adds a folder with an XML used for Wax generation and a T4 template. 
If you remember my video on architecture, I explained that what uses several layers. These layers are under my T4 template, which itself contains T4 templates for the different layers. So here we are. We did the job for the server. Now we'll create the client. With current version, we can use WPF and Silverlight 5. In this sample, we will use WPF application. So, Max Tooling Demo in that client. As with the server, we have to install the NuGet package and then run the commandlet. You must set the project where you want to add the code as a default one in the package manager console. As previously, the first parameter is the ADMX pass, and the second could be the service URL or the SVC pass. The third one allows splitting in the different main parts of WAX, like with the server commandlet. Here we are. So now if we want to use MVVM, we create a view model. So for example, main window view model. And we use a command let to initialize it. The first parameter is the name of the LMX we use. And the second one is the view pass. This one is optional. If we specify it, it adds the view model as a constructor parameter of the view and sets it as data context. At runtime, it will be injected by Unity. For this video about tooling, we will do something very easy we will return all customers of the database. I created a snippet to ease the querying that I share on my blog. In order to get all customers, we execute an asynchronous query on the customer's client entity set. We can also use link syntax like this.
Now we can add a list box into XML to show these customers. And it works. So there is one more point very important about WAX. It is not a framework, it's a meta framework. What does it mean? It means that all the code is generated on your project. It means that you don't have a black box. Now, if you look at the T4, you can see that the meta code only calls a method defined in another T4 file, which is in one location on the disk, and which is a sort of wax T4 gag. So if you change these files, your changes will be applied for all your future projects and also for your existing project, if you regenerate your code, what is very easy to do. For example, imagine that we want to update our ODMX importing the orders table. Then we just have to click on transform all templates button to regenerate all of our solution T4 files. And so if I change my view model, so for example where c.orders.count more than 20 and we run our program again, free customers. Now there is another advantage to use a meta framework. Imagine that you want to have a custom behavior in one special project. If you use a framework built by someone else, perhaps you can't do what you want. If you got a framework, and you want to allow this kind of behavior changes, you need to use delegates or configuration file. In my opinion, it won't be a good way if you have many different possible customizations. With a meta framework, we have the code on our project and it's very easy to use a partial method. So you can define the partial method on your meta framework and then it's very easy to have specific behaviors. Okay, so it's all for today. In my next video, I will show you wax features.